Well, it's a Saturday evening, I'm off for a night out and I'm looking forward to it. It's been a while since I did a night out, a good two or three months and I'm hoping this is going to become a more regular thing. And I've just found a small wild edible, um, wood sorrel. And if I pan down to there, put this over like so. There we go. Very tasty. Got a very apple taste. set my camp up in a minute and I'm going to show you how I do it. Alfie the obstinate wonder hound is with me today. I don't know why he's being so often. He's got his head down just now tracking something. Well I'll be back in a minute guys. I'm just going to offload the pack. It's a lot for an overnight I know but then got some new gear to test out. I'll see you in a second or two. Right guys, I'm going to hitch my tarp up between that tree and that tree. Now it's fairly flat, there's a few little things to get rid of, like there's a uh, twig there. It's quite nice if you look around the area. A very nice rowan tree, zooming onto the leaves there. Very nice. In the distance I can hear woodpeckers. I'm not sure what that tree is, it's certainly not oak, could be a chestnut or maybe a willow, and evidence of woodpeckers. It's well and truly past its time and it's now, ah, it's a pine, there you go, maybe with some of the dead wood I might be able to get some fat wood off it, anyway, let's see, I'm going to set up the tarp in a second or two. Uh, I found some wood here and they're going to make my stakes for the uh, tarp. It's going to be fairly low profile tonight. And there's Alfie the Wonder Hound. The foraging dog that didn't do a lot of foraging tonight. I couldn't find any ramsons. Ah, quite far away. Right guys, um Four tent stakes. Now I'm going to put up the. I'm going to put up the tarp now. That's the beastie. Now it's been a good few months since this has been up. So right, I always kick off with an event figure of eight slippery hitch. You bring it round like so. You pull it over. And do that. Like then, well, take it to the other end. So, what I'm going to have to do is turn this off for a minute and go out a bit further. I'll change my mind on that one. Right. Second knot is the, uh, I suppose it's in many ways, it's called a tent cart port hitch, which is um, exactly what it says. And I should come round, I've got a lot of play on this one, so you come round, I'll get that same point, bring it over the top. Triangle and you pull. 
I like to make a bit of a daisy chain on this one. So I'll put it in again and I'll pull again. There we go. That's that done. All I've got to do is just feed this little beast here. Oh, yeah, it's coming out quite well. Right. So what I'll do... I brought my fro out with me today um, because I thought I might have had a fire, but I've changed my mind on that. No open fires today. Well, get a general gist of putting this up, so I'm going to shut down for a bit, get the, get the camp set up and then go through the camp in a bit. Okay, do Right, the event slippery hitch has come down here. You see a, a prussic knot, which tightens this tarp up. Come up to the other end, you can see the what I've done there, come down to here and you've got a type of half prosic knot. It doesn't show very well here, but I should do another video. I've done one before on the various knots that I use. So, there we go. I've got my rucksack there. It's a bit spiky there, got some um, bits of holly in that, so come up new sleeping bag and my canteen equipment and in a minute I'm gonna have a little cook up so there we go that's my sleeping arrangements for tonight I want to move the dog up to the other end so he's nearer me I'll see you guys in a moment well guys it took me about 20 minutes to get this going I couldn't get it going at all until I discovered that there was a slight blockage in the gas jet. So, good thing to remind me about. My Crusader cup fits on there rather nicely. Right now, I'm show you. I've, instead of having a net bag I've had for my utensils, I'm gonna, I've got this box from uh, IKEA. 
and very good and it's going to be my utensils and ingredients box for, for the future really and that bag didn't really live up to what I wanted it to do so I'm just going to pull the lid off this get the tea bags out and there we go some tea bags in there oil seasonings loose tea and cooking implements and cooking implements so uh, there we go oh and a fire flash so everything I need to make a cup of tea and something to eat in a bit well guys um, the promise is working well it's taken a long time to boil up the water it's been uh, I'm not going to put a litre of water on it ever again not if I can help it but maybe it's due to my inexperience with this type of cooker um, personally I would have used a Trangia cooker for a quicker boiling time but um, according to the charts about 250 mils of fuel burns for 70 minutes so it's, um, it's a trade off really it's a very nice evening here um, the sun's going down and I'm feeling quite comfy the ground's a bit damp and I shouldn't be lying on it really being that, it's that damp but salavi uh, I've got Elfie wandering around behind me, he's on a, a long leash tonight, I don't let him loose because being a rescue dog he has had a bit of wandering off sometimes and disappearing for a, a long while and it's quite annoying, it gets you all panicky like that. Well, um, while I'm waiting for this water to come up to the boil, which is almost there, a few thoughts, um, going, I've had thoughts of doing the uh, Wood Smoke Aboriginal course next year, doing it as a solo rather than in a team. Um, it's very similar to the Journeyman. You can only do these particular courses, the Journeyman and the Aboriginal, if you've done a fundamental type bushcraft course in the past. Unfortunately, some of these courses are very expensive and you know not all of us can afford it. And I find it rather sad that, you know, sometimes you want to develop your skills, but there's not, it's, um, sometimes you want to develop your skill and you're unable to because of the cost of a course. So, you know, it is, it is sad, but then again, you don't always have to go on a course to enjoy this. It isn't about, sometimes it just isn't about that. It's about enjoying the woods and enjoying enjoying nature, not necessarily woodland. I've come to a, a small decision. Though I've bought some new kit, um, namely the Marimir's knife and the wilderness axe, I've had deep thoughts about this. Though I love the tools and I will take them out with me occasionally, I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm going to stop taking a Mora Clipper bush knife out all the time. I don't need to. I mean, I'm here tonight, I'm doing a one night thing, everything's here I need, and all I needed to use was the uh, SAK Forester, which is um, that little beastie. It's a handy knife, and it's a folding knife. It's still an illegal blade because it, has, it locks, but even with the um, Swiss Army camper that would do the dog just as well. We don't always need to carry loads of tools out with us. Um, often we carry too much, you know. Do we carry it out because we need to or is it just because we want to have a little bit of a show? I don't know. Anyway, back to what I was saying about courses. Um, there are plenty of books around, plenty of um, people with knowledge. I won't say they're all experts out there because there are some very dodgy advice going around. Um, but you can filter the dodgy advice. It's it's um, as I say, it's it's the cost of the courses. You know, 500 quid for a week is a lot of money. For me, it's my holiday and it's my break from the routine of work. Though, though I do enjoy my job, I like to get away from that 
from that particular routine. If I was doing this all the time, I would love it, you know. It would be great, but we can't. Someone did put up on Facebook about trying to set up an organisation of people that do bushcraft. There again, that's fraught with difficulty because you've always got internal politics. You've always got people that are doing all the work and those that just hop on for the ride. And it's a bit unfortunate that. Um, it's, it would be good to have a national organisation similar to the Ramblers, British Canoe, British Canoe Union, something like that to fight our ground. What I would like to see, not we've got we've got good access to land. You know, all you've got to do is seek permission and if you approach people the right way, you can normally get it. Okay, it can be very difficult. Um, the Ramblers Association, which I do encourage people to join, fought for a long time for the Countryside Right of Way Act. Um, some people claim to be robbed by these organisations, but they don't see what goes on in the background, you know. Allow the British Canoe Union allow works with the Environment Agency. We, we have to get permission to paddle the rivers, or certain rivers in this country. But also, by paying that subscription, you're also helping the organisation fight for our cause. You know, it's quite easy for a government to turn and say, well, we won't have that, we won't have that. Um, often it's, and that's the way it is, you know. It would be great to, to be able to carry a knife into the woods, into public woodland, that's fixed blade, no longer than five inches, say, so you can practice our skills. But unfortunately, we are struck with idiots. Um, I would like to use an iron rifle or a room fire 2 too, but I've got nowhere to use it, so what's the point of me buying one? I've mentioned this before. But other than that, it's, um, yeah, it's, we, we, we don't have, people perceive that there's a big fight going on. But basically, it's just common sense. If you approach people, with good manners and good intent, you can sometimes get what you require. It's unfortunate that there are a few out there that do ruin it for us. Whether they mean to or not is a, is a moot point. Um, anyway, I'm going to go and drink some tea, cook my evening meal, and I think I'm going to get under that tarp. It's looking a bit, a bit um, cloudy, looks a bit rainy, a bit showery. Anyway, I shall come back in a little while maybe, or I might just get my head down. Anyway, TTFN till soon. Of course, which is uh, rice with um, cranberries and mussels. We've got a little trout over there which I want to fry up. I've discovered one thing, soot. There's a little bit, the reason why it took such a long time to boil this water was there was soot in the jet. So, big learning curve. But anyway, as I say, um, I'm, doing this, I'm doing this solo course next year, this solo Aboriginal course, and it's um, hardcore, very hardcore. Um, as far as I know, if it's anything like the Woodlaw one, we have one billy can, three layers on top, two layers below, and a woolly hat, uh, a bit of cordage to make your bow drill with, a friction fire, and that was it. So, anyway. Um, this really sounds good now, it's loud, it's louder than I'd like, but I now know that there was a blockage. Yeah, back to, yeah, um, as I say, I'm always willing to share my skills, you know, and share my knowledge and share what I do. Anybody got a question, you just got to ask me, but for most, most of my followers know what they're doing, I yeah, hope so. Um, Sandy and I think it's White Wolf Bushcraft. I'm going to try and get down your way later in the year, so maybe we can get a meet up and along with you, Adam, as well. 
Um, I've got some other stuff sorted out at the moment. Oh, that's more like it. I'll be back in a little while, guys, and we'll get this dinner on the go. There we go, folks. Mussels, rice, and cranberries. There's an awful lot of rice here. In fact, it was almost free rice. I bought two kilos of cooked rice for 50p from work. As we've not opened the store to the public, we're having a lot of practice going on at the moment. And at the end of the day, the stuff that hasn't been practiced on or needs to be disposed of is sold to the staff that are there at a very, very cut price. coming up for two o'clock in the morning. Um, had a bit of a, a rush around at about ten. I decided to get my head down a bit early. Um, it's getting darker and I was feeling a bit a bit chilly so I decided to get down a bit, down a bit early. Woke up at ten to the sound of uh, rain, rain upon the tarp so it was a quick rush around to get all the gear underneath which I managed to do. Um, the sleeping bag, which I've actually unzipped because I had to go and do something, is very, very comfortable for a three-season bag. It's nice and warm, bearing in mind that I haven't completely undressed, but it's um, very tasty anyway. I'm going to go and get my head back down for a bit and uh, see you when it gets light, guys. Good morning guys, um, listen, it's 20 to 6, this is a dawn chorus, wonderful isn't it? Well guys, I must admit that was a really good night, apart from that little drop of rain we had about 10 o'clock last night which almost put the mockers on it, I thought if it, if it had carried on for any longer than it did I might have seriously thought of pack, packing up and actually going home, but I'm not I'm normally a uh, fair weather camper basically. Um, we're doing a little overview of the sleeping bag. The sleeping bag is pucker. Nice new sleeping bag kept me warm. It's a little pack's a little bit larger than I'd like, but it's warm and it's great. And I got my hands inside because I felt the cold a bit. I was, I was going to have a read, but my hands are feeling the were feeling a bit cold, so I'm going to bring some some thermal gloves out next time. I've got some sort of freezer type gloves. It's very very comfortable. They're thin, but I keep your hands warm. Um, obviously I had a little bit of a verbal earlier about aspects of bushcraft. I, as I said, as I said earlier, I didn't bring any large knife out with me. I bought my Laplander saw. It actually proved useful because I needed to cut some stakes for the thing. And a um, pocket knife and that was it. I think when you go out boys and girls, we must question ourselves, do we need to take half the kit that we take with us, you know? Taking, taking the uh, bushcraft knife seems good, you know, it's, it's a thing, you know, look, I'm a bushcrafter, you know, I've got this big knife, but do we need to take... Well, there you go folks, the Woodlaw Nanok sleeping bag. Right, right there, the two mesh pockets with zips on to keep personals in. Um, I normally keep my phone in it and the eye touch and I did keep this in it overnight. The cold has really sapped the batteries on this so I might not get it all in. Three season bag, it's the, as I said, it's the Woodlock Nanok Osprey sleeping bag and runs, you can work, use it through the spring, summer and autumn. Very cosy, very snug. The 
hood's got a cord in it, so I'll pull it right open so just my nose sticks out. Plenty of room in the box, foot box, so it's put your clothes in. And it's very comfortable. It doesn't feel like you're being wrapped up in a very tight bag. It's extremely comfortable. It's slightly mummy shaped, but you've got plenty of foot room. Wonderful little bag. I recommend it, actually. Um, well, there's a lot, a lot to say. It's a very comfy bag.